Hey everyone, got good news. This week we released uh, new software for the CAN server that finally lets you set up the server and all the micro displays without the need for programming things yourself. The new software lets you set up and configure your CAN server and all the displays with just a regular web browser. And actually there's a lot more features as well. So stick around this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the new features and stay to the end for something special. Okay. So when you bring up the CAN server on a web browser, uh, you can initially connect directly to the CAN server Wi-Fi, which is the same Wi-Fi that the uh, displays are connecting to. Um, and you'll see this, this web, web page. Um, so it shows you some memory details. Um, also has some firmware update uploads on there. But we're gonna click the network tab and the nice thing here is you see external wireless connection. So what you plug in here is the Wi-Fi, your home Wi-Fi, and uh, your home Wi-Fi and password. And it will, from then on, log into your home wireless network as well as its own network. So you can then, uh, you don't have to you have your browser, computer, whatever, connect to the CAN server Wi-Fi. It can stay on your home Wi-Fi, and it will get its own IP address, which it'll show you. And so. I'm now connected through my home Wi-Fi, connected to the CAN server. Um, so it makes things just easier. In fact, you can be sitting on your couch and working on this stuff while it's out in your car. All right, so we talked about the network screen, and here's the first screen. But the most important thing here is the displays tab. Uh, in this tab, we open it up, and what we see here is uh, some simple Lua scripting to control the display. Uh, top, you can select which display you want. You see all four displays that can be connected to the server. And um, this isn't really code, it's just a simple Lua script. And uh, the return at the bottom is what's sent out to the display. Um, and uh, what I'll do here is, is demonstrate. Uh, we're looking at display zero, and I've got one right here. Uh, right now it's showing uh, battery kilowatts. So um, the first few lines is uh, comparing to the center displays uh, if it's on or not, so when you leave the car, the display, the micro display turns off right away, um, so it's not on all night while you're charging, whatever. Um, and then it grabs, uh, there is no battery kilowatt message data, don't drop your iPad. <laughs> and um, there is no battery kilowatt message data, so we grab battery volts, battery amps, um, and then we um, get watts out of that, we divide it by a thousand, or, um, for kilowatts, and we also divide by 24 to get the bar graph. And so we spit those into the display. Uh, we always multiply by 10 to get that extra decimal point if you read the display documentation. Um, and we also add the 24 bars uh, for the battery power in the bar graph. So to show how this is working live, um, right now I'm in mode zero. To show that, I can just quickly change the mode over to one. This is why an iPad is not desktop. So if I change that mode, so if I change that mode over to one and hit save down here, as soon as I hit save, it updates the display right away. Uh, mode one is text mode and I've put in hello text and uh, we see hello there. I could, uh, for example, that's too small, let's make that uh, size three text and I hit save, and now it's big hello. Um, and I just go back and change the mode back to zero while the iPad fights me. While the iPad fights me. And hit save, and it goes back to the original mode. So this is, it's simple, it's awesome, it's super powerful. Um, but the great thing is it's just text that you can copy and paste. So I'm going to have a page on the Can't Server GitHub with a number of example displays. I'm working on building that out. Uh, we might have some other uh, ways of making them even simpler. And in the future, maybe we have an app or something even easier to use. But right now, anyone can go in and configure their displays to do whatever they can imagine. Uh, if you look at display one, this is the one showing uh, normally it's displays torque, but I have some advanced uh, battery information because I was looking at that the other day. And display two is the speedometer display. Uh, this is, looks complex for a speedometer. Well, that's because 
uh, we're switching between miles per hour and kilometers per hour. And then I also have the blind spot detection. So if, it, if uh, the blind spot warning comes up, it'll overlay the speed with arrows. So again, you can do this all in this display setup. It's, it's super powerful, uh, but relatively easy if you want it to be simple. And the bottom line is you don't really need to program anymore. It's going to all be done through a web browser. We already talked about the network tab. So the next one over is analysis. These are all the CAN signals that it's monitoring. So as you add signals for the displays to display, um, <laughs> you have to enter the CAN messages for it to pull off the network. Um, so you'll see obvious things uh, like battery volts and battery amps, and you'll see the CAN message and the actual uh, bit information to, um, to read those. And um, you can easily um, actually, there's a nice little thing that copies it to your clipboard, um, and you can paste things onto the, actually the whole web page here. So I'll have another document with um, quick reference to signals, for example, maybe matching some of those displays, and you can just paste them in. You don't have to worry about setting all these in here. Um, or you can manually add one by hitting new item and, and giving it a name and setting all that stuff up. Um, there's buttons on the side to, to save and delete. That's, it's pretty easy to use. Again, you can do it manually, or you can just copy and paste from anyone sharing just um, a couple lines of text um, to set up your somewhat complex CAN messaging. Uh, maybe in the future we'll have some tool that um, will do all this stuff uh, even easier, or a phone app, but this is already easy to, to do with just a web browser and copy and paste uh, and a website. So um, the great thing is now everything ships with this in here, so you no longer have the old requirement that I said you need to be able to program it yourself. Um, hopefully we can do all firmware updates through here. Um, now for the great stuff. Um, last tab here says logging. And you'll notice I have an SD card reader on the CAN server. If you uh, put a micro SD card in there, you'll be able to take CAN logs. Now I guess regular people won't care about this stuff, but you know it's what I do all the time. And instead of using a very expensive CAN logger or having to plug a computer into the network, now that your little CAN server can do live logging and it's full speed. So if I check off raw log right now, I actually have some previous logs. Let's delete those. I'll, I'll hit the delete button, delete the file, it goes back to zero. And when you hit check, as soon as you hit save, it's now dumping every CAN message to that log on there. And what's great is I'm connected to the web browser here and you can actually see that file size counting up as it's logging. You want to stop logging, uncheck it, hit save again, it's stopped. Uh, another nice thing is this interval log. It's one of my personally requested features that nothing else offers. It will record, again, every CAN message it sees, but once every five seconds. So it filters everything down, keeps track, and what you'll get is if you want to, set, if you want to take logs over hours of time, or even days, you can do this interval log uh, in the same way as the raw log, and uh, it'll use much, much less wet space. And the hope for this is that you have this on all the time and maybe there's a, a tool in the future or um, something like, think of Teslafy on steroids where it's always looking at this interval log of CAN data where you have five second intervals of every little piece of data in the car, not the very little limited subset that Teslafy looks at through the API, but every piece of CAN data in the car and this could upload after every drive when it connects to your home Wi-Fi in the future, hopefully, if people want to support that. But even for now, I have this in here because the other night we were talking about battery balancing, and I was able to let the log roll overnight, and it only used 20 megabytes. And I didn't need to see every message. I just wanted to see over time how did the battery voltages change, how did the battery balancing change. This lets me do it super easily with simple equipment, a web browser. I'm so thrilled to have these features in here. Uh, and, and hopefully this is easy enough for everyone to use and powerful enough for people to think of some amazing possibilities. Um, so I'm really proud for this. And again, this has all been from the Tesla community. They've helped out. I, this is no longer my work in the software. This is because some, we've had some brilliant people in the Tesla community, community that I'm really thankful for. So if all that wasn't amazing enough, I got one more thing that to me is really incredible, and this is what happens when everyone works together. You know I'm a fan of Teslax for all the things that it can show you in the car. And Teslax has always required 
uh, and Scan My Tesla has always required you to buy one of these OBD links, which over Bluetooth sends this data from one CAN network to Tesla X or Scan My Tesla. And these things are almost 100 bucks. Well, you don't need them anymore because now we can do it with CAN server over Wi Fi with a much higher bandwidth than Bluetooth will ever give you. And this is already in Tesla X. So let's show you that really quickly. You can go into accessories. I have no compatible devices, but you'll see there's a Panda support, which is another uh, Wi Fi interface. And you put in the IP address of your CAN server. And uh, this, of course, would be uh, 4.1 if you were connected directly to CAN server while you were driving. And uh, hopefully this works. Ah. You got to hit the connect button at the bottom. <laughs> Remember, Teslax is not my app. This is Jake Borden's app. And again, he's just like wildfire when he programs this thing. It's just amazing. Uh, so we're connected through the CAN server, not the OBD link. Um, and we're getting live data with Teslax. And this is just, it's just awesome because now you can do everything. You don't have to jigger things around. You can keep that connected to your uh, CAN bus. And then the awesome feature that he's added here is this new CAN bus cam, which now, horizontal video, hit record, can put those gauges in. And this course is default gauges. Uh, I guess we'll see steering angle here, but it's overlaying it over the video into a video file. And we're using the CAN server to do it. This is just an, uh, this is, this is why this, the Tesla community is just so impressive because they, we all come together and we all do our own little piece of the puzzle. And, uh, Everyone has, has got their own little brilliance, and it, and it all comes together. It's awesome. So check out, uh, if you have not already, check out the CAN server. Check out micro displays. Check out Tesla X. Um, and, again, the web links are in below. The web pages have links to the store to buy them. But please go through the GitHub and read through all the manuals. Try to understand it before you buy it. Or just send me an email, and I'll, I'll help you out. Um, this is exciting release, and to me, I think it's finally usable for everybody. So that's a quick and exciting update for today. Thanks again.